Share Factory. It's back, it's bigger than ever, bringing a lot of cool new features to the PS5 to improve your content creation and take it to the next level. You're right kids, it's Ras Clark. And understanding there's quite a lot of my viewers out there that use Share Factory to record and edit and publish their videos, including me. Almost all of my videos are done through Share Factory, believe it or not. And I've got a strong suspicion we're going to see more people using Share Factory due to the 4K HDR support and the 60 frames per second, allowing you to publish some absolutely superb high quality videos. But there's a lot of new features, as well as some issues to understand when it comes to importing your own content. And I'm here to give you a full understanding, creating those mistakes myself. Before we begin, don't forget to drop a like, hit that subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So beyond the cool new ability that the PS5 allows you to record videos on the fly, instead of you having to choose a specified minute slot of record time. You can now do it in game. You can choose to record on the fly or you can choose to save your recent gameplay with a variety of options of your choosing. And once you're in Share Factory, you'll notice there's a few new features as well as the new integrated stickers, transitions and music tracks. Share Factory have gone one step further by offering a tapestry effect so you can see the different parts of your video. They've also offered an improved music track visualization and the ability to reverse and rebound your videos. A pretty cool new feature is the ability to import sound effects. So instead of having to mix them in with your music, you can now overlay them like you would overlay an image or sticker. And you can now start projects without having to pick a creator pack and having a blank canvas. Sadly, they still haven't applied an undo button, but there is a variety of cool features behind the scenes for you to use. Most of them I covered in a previous video and I'll link it here somewhere. But the purpose of this video, the reason why I thought I had to create this encountering the same issues myself. Importing. Importing is very different now, with different resolutions and file types now supported. And I'm going to give you the rundown as well as offer some handy tips that you're going to need to know, I promise you. So if you've never imported content onto a PS4 or PS5 before, you'll of course need these files on an external hard drive, be it a USB stick or otherwise. And within that, you're going to create a folder called Share Factory. You can do it in all caps, it doesn't matter. And then within there, you're going to need to make four folders called, and they must be called, images, music, sounds, and videos. And what's important to know is what type of files you can put in these to be able to be imported. So starting with the images first, this one's pretty straightforward. It's either got to be a JPEG or a PNG. And the resolution can change from 64 by 64 pixels all the way up to 3840 by 2160. You can check the resolution of your file simply by clicking on it and perhaps checking its properties. Music, there's a bit of leniency there with a range of music files allowed to be imported from MP3, MP4, M4A, AAC, OGG, AMR, 3GP and 3GP2 allowing you up to a bit rate of 320 kilobytes per second. Now I know to some of you this might be going straight over your head, but don't worry, just stick to MP3. Right, sounds, the new addition to PS5. You're limited to only WAV files. They might be called WAV files. And it's no different to an MP3, but of course you're going to need some external software to convert that MP3 to a WAV or WAV file. There is a limitation on how short that same file can be. You need a minimum of a second. Now, videos, the nitty gritty, the reason why I'm doing this video, because it took me hours to figure out and understand the issues that I was facing, and I want to ensure that you don't face the same problems. So to kick it off, the files you're allowed are MP4, M4V, MOV files, and WEBM. The first three allowing you to submit anything between 64 by 64 pixels to 1920 by 1080. And the latter being able to be pushed all the way up to 4K 3840 by 2160. 
you need to ensure the bitrate of the video is below 62.5 megabytes per second. But my word, if you go in that high, you've got an issue. For example, I'll range between 12 and 5 megabytes per second myself. Now, Share Factory, do note your videos need to be compressed with a progressive scan. However, there's one thing they don't note that I'm now going to run you through. So obviously, there's a variety of ways to convert videos to record videos, and I'm going to target two of the most popular sources and then hope that you can use this as a baseline if you're using something else. So in Streamlabs, you need to go to your settings and then look for the option called Output. Now you need to make sure it's on advanced mode. Don't worry too much about the rest of this, but ensure that the profile option is selected as baseline. Baseline. This is the most important part to ensure that Share Factory recognizes your video. And of course you can change the resolution and you'll want to change it to 1920 by 1080. So using any media compression software, any software to convert your video to another file type, in my case, it's Adobe Encoder. And all we need to do is simply add the file, right click it, check the export settings. Of course, make sure it's an MP4 by selecting H264. And then here in the video section, scroll down, obviously checking it's progressive, but most importantly, making sure the profile is moved from main to baseline. And from there, every video that has this setting will import correctly and I won't encounter any more issues. And that wraps it all up, kids. I hope this helps. It was a real challenge for me, so I'm hoping it's going to benefit some of you out there too. My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, peace out.